Very often we want to size an element based on the viewport height or width. So here I have an element with a background color that's only covering 10% of the viewport height. So the viewport is whatever you see here in the browser. That's the visible area of the web page. So viewport is different from screen resolution. So screen resolution is what I see in its entirety here on my screen. So for me, that's going to be 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels tall. That's my screen resolution. And the viewport is simply the visible area of the web page here. So it's still going to be very close to 1080 so that does not include this browser ui stuff here so you can already sense that there are some issues with sizing things based on viewport height and width now typically on desktop and laptops this is not an issue so i can size this for example easily to be a hundred percent of the viewport height and it works as expected now unfortunately it does not work as expected when you use that on mobile phones so there's actually a great article about this on web.dev this is the url and they actually have some great illustrations in this article so often on a phone you have this other stuff as part of the UI. So if you keep using 100% viewport height, when that address bar is present, that's actually going to be too much. So here, if you have the address bar and this toolbar at the bottom, if you use that 100% VH unit, you're going to see that it's too big. Right? So it's going to overflow here. And in some cases, you may not have the toolbar at the bottom. It's going to be something like this on other types of fonts. But you still have that address bar at the top here. And sometimes you don't have it at the top, you have it at the bottom. The point being is that you have this dynamic UI in mobile browsers. And this VH unit does not automatically adjust. So it's going to be a fixed size, essentially. And that's going to be a problem because sometimes you're going to have the address bar and when you scroll up or down it's going to be removed so this is not what we want and this used to be a big problem actually for a long time but these days we have a good solution for this so what's now possible is to divide these two options so these days we can split it up so these days we have a small viewport that means when the address bar and or toolbar is present and we have a large viewport when these things are retracted when they are not present so they have their own units so for the large one we have lvh instead of just vh we have lv H. So if you do something like 100 LVH, it's going to look good on this large viewport. But the 100 LVH is still going to be too big for this small viewport. So for the small viewport, we have SVH. So you can use 100% of the SVH and it's going to look perfect here. But of course, it's going to be too small here because here we have more space. So 100% SVH is going to look great on this small viewport. And 100% LVH is going to look perfect on the large viewport. But we want it to look good on both of them with just one unit and that unit is dvh or dynamic viewport height this unit automatically adapts itself to be either the large or small viewport size so instead of using vh from now on you probably want to use dynamic viewport height from now on and there are some caveats here at the bottom of this article so here when it changes it's not at 60 frames per second so it may look a little bit laggy in some circumstances but that's not a huge problem now for browser support you can see it's very good it's only internet explorer that's lagging here but overall it's fine it's going to get better soon so if you want to know more about this i'll link the article in the description now if you really want to become a professional developer i have a react next.js course check it out make sure you've mastered the fundamentals both javascript as well as css i have courses on them both check out the links in the description thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon bye